Another huge Olympic star collapsing under all the pressure. U.S. skiing champion Michaela Schif Schifrin, uh, she is pretty much unequaled in the sport. She really is amazing. And she didn't have a good night last night. She failed to finish her slalom event. Uh, she was expected to medal. NBC broadcasters focused on the failure, showing Schifrin sitting alone for 25 minutes in disappointment on the side of the slope. Uh, the night before, she crashed only 11 seconds into her first race. Unable to defend her gold. She's a two time Olympic gold medalist, six time world champion, and she knows how to ski incredibly well. But comparisons now being made between Schifrin and Olympic gymnast Simone Biles, who, as you remember, withdrew from multiple events at last year's Tokyo Summer Games due to her mental health concerns. Uh, being an Olympic athlete, it's an incredible accomplishment in and of itself. But it comes with so much added pressure and stress, especially when you're trying to repeat gold medals in successive games, add on the COVID protocols, and being lonely in communist China, it makes the situation much worse. Is, should there be a better system to support these athletes instead of just making them puppets for TV ratings? Or do U.S. athletes need to toughen up? The party panel is back. Gary Hoffman, Harold Ford Jr., and Hannah Cox. Uh, what do you make of it, Gary? Because, you know, obviously they do these incredible, just heart-wrenching packages, especially on the athletes we know and love in these high-profile events. And, you know, when they have a bad moment, a bad second, uh, so much of their world just craters. What are we doing wrong? I don't know if we're doing anything wrong other than uh, informing the people that are going to, you know, try to live up to these goals and expectations. Either they set for themselves, their their family set, their coaches set for them. In the Olympics case, maybe their country sets for them. Yeah. And just let them know, hey, listen, uh, this is going to this is going to be tough. This, this is going to be very very hard. And we all are cheering for you to succeed. We want you to win a medal. But in the off chance that uh, you know you catch a ski on that gate five seconds down the run. We're not going anywhere. We're not going to chew you up and spit you out. We're not going to make you know uh, make you an evil being. We're not going to, you know, uh, for some reason, blame the collapse of society on the fact that you made it 11 seconds into your run. That it, hey, it's okay. Yeah. It's it's a great message to send to kids that every once in a while, you know, you've been great up to this point. You're going to trip and fall every once in a while. The question is, are you going to stay down? Are you going to let it get you down? Yeah. Or are you going to come back and, uh, and rise up and do, you know, compete in the other events that are still out in front of you? Well, there was an incredible story from uh, Lindsay Jacob Ellis. I don't know if you saw this, Harold Ford Jr. Uh, she was well in the lead in border cross in 2006. Uh, she did a method error off the final jump and fell, lost the gold medal. It has haunted her ever since. Uh, she's the oldest female athlete at the Games. She's competing, I think it's in her sixth Olympics, and she won the first U.S. gold today. It is such an incredible story because it just goes to show you, you can fall, you can fail, but you can keep pushing and trying when people tell you no, when they tell you it's impossible. And for her to come out with the first gold medal, I think that is an extraordinary story. The Lord is in the blessing business. I concur with Gary. It's getting up that, that matters more. I think you tell more about a person or able to tell more about a person when they face strife uh, and controversy and failure than you do and how they behave when they, they're winning. Uh, I listened to this young lady, and I'm rooting for her in a big way. She's obviously had some loss in her life, family mm -hmm. loss over the, over the past few years. Uh, there's no doubt there's a lot of pressure, but we all make mistakes. She's got a few events in front of her. Uh, and based on her record, I wouldn't count this young lady out. She may bring home an, a gold or two for yeah. us uh, before she leaves the Olympics. Yeah, and it's, you know, she had, she had a really interesting um, it, explanation. And, you know, she said, Hannah, I just know how to do skiing. And I did what I did every other time and every other time I won. And I don't have an explanation. And she said, I question the last 15 years of ski racing. And that has got to be tough. If you are following the same formula and it doesn't work out for you and you've known pretty much nothing but success. But, you know, it's like I look at her and she is phenomenal. She is amazing. She is truly amazing. And I think that that's really sad because our culture loves to build people up 
put them on a pedestal, especially young female celebrities and athletes, and then tear them down and really kind of revel when they fail or mess up. And we have a culture that doesn't let you ride on your merits. They constantly want you to perform and do better and do more and do more. And I think that that's a really hard environment. She hasn't come out and said that she has mental health issues like Simone Biles did last year, but I thought that was really brave of her as somebody who also has a generalized anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. I know how much being in the spotlight can actually impact your mental health, can impact your performance. And I think for young girls who are looking up to athletes like this, it's important to see other female athletes win gold medals and succeed, but it's almost more important, I think, to see them lose with grace and to yeah. have resilience and to keep building back up and to even be honest about the struggles that they're facing and the realities of what being in that career looks like. Because so often we're sold this image of Hollywood or the Olympics where you get to this level and everything in your life is going to be great. And that's simply not true. You should still aim to be successful and do well, but we need to start educating people a bit more about the pitfalls of fame and success yeah. as well. Absolutely right. And, uh, you know, it's like the pressure. And I don't know if there's more pressure in the United States and other countries. I think, you know, the idea of these lifelong endorsements and, you know, this, this massive cultural and financial windfall, that, that is so much pressure in and of itself as opposed to some place like Communist China or Russia uh, where they take everything away from you if you don't win. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know which one is worse. I still prefer these United States, oddly enough. Uh, well, speaking of mental gymnastics in a place that is in the U.S., back in Canada, Justin Trudeau twisting in every direction to paint the truckers protesting vaccine mandates as racists and Nazis. Here's some of what he said this week to the Canadian House of Commons. The people of Ottawa don't deserve to be harassed in their own neighborhoods. They don't deserve to be confronted with the inherent violence of a swastika flying on a street corner or a Confederate flag or the insults and jeers just because they're wearing a mask. Who's really acting like Nazis? Check out this video of an Ottawa cop roughly handling a 78-year-old great-grandfather who stands at a whopping four foot ten. They arrested him for honking his horn in support of the truckers. So how is this protest going to end and who holds the moral high ground? Uh, man, Gary, uh, that was Jerry Charlebois, 78 years old. People look at that video and go, really, Canada? I don't think you're getting it right here. Yeah, they're not getting it right. I, it does start with Justin Trudeau. I actually think he has a lot to gain if he says to uh, anybody in this trucking convoy, hey, listen, I'll sit down with you. You pick five people. I'll sit down at a table with you guys, uh, and, and we'll discuss what's going on. I'll explain my position. You explain your position. The problem is this guy is the worst Disney prince that's ever existed, <laughs> Prince uh, Sorry Von Empathy or whatever, whatever he thinks he is. <laughs> He's doing this completely wrong by trying to marginalize people who have a different opinion. Yeah. I mean, he's doing what what most liberal politicians say Republicans and conservatives do. He's othering these people. He's making them seem like they're the crazy ones. They're the ones who aren't uh, aren't in touch with sanity yeah. and dropping the old uh, racist Nazi Confederate flag thing. I feel it's it's losing its steam. I, and when Canadians start using Confederate flags as part of their political discourse, haven't we done something wrong? They've done something wrong. Clearly, Harold Ford Jr., that's why you live in, in the U.S. Whose side are you on, Harold? Well, I'm on the side of, of, of law and order in this regard. I think when you disagree with a political policy, you disagree with a politician, uh, you do the responsible thing. You either go to court to challenge the law or you unelect them from office. Uh, you I happen protest. To agree with, I mean, that's, that's codified you know, in the First Amendment. With, without question, but you're not allowed to infringe I mean, upon our my First rights. Amendment, not the dumb Canadian one, which apparently let you beat up old people. Look, that, that police officer clearly was out of line with the 78-year-old man or any 18-year-old guy. I just think, but what is protesting, undoing a law, or unelecting an elected official? That's how you do it. You don't, you don't, you don't infringe upon other people's rights. I, I think what they're trying to do, I, I, you know, I don't mind what they're trying to. I support. I don't necessarily support their what they're trying to do in terms of the outcome, but they have every right to do it. But it doesn't seem to be that effective. Yeah. Uh, if you really want to do it, unelect Trudeau or go about trying to change the law. Yeah, and the truckers are just trying to get a little bit of medical privacy here. Hannah, are you are you disappointed in Justin Trudeau? He is such a waste of a pretty face. He could have been so hot, and then he goes out and he acts like this. I think it's disgusting. 
and it's going to stop working. Listen, between this and the Joe Rogan hit attack this week, I think people like me are getting radicalized against this kind of language. I don't buy it anymore. I don't care what tweet you pull out of somebody. I don't care what label you give them. I don't buy it. I don't want to hear it. I'm sick of this cancel culture, and I'm especially sick of people in government trying to label their own citizens as terrorists for protesting and pushing back in a democracy or in a republic like we are in. That is a vital part of our system. Amen. We cannot wait for elections to come around because real lives are on the line, right? I think it's fine to vote people out. I think it's fine to go through yep. those kinds of recourses, but sometimes more immediate action needs to be taken. That's what these truckers are doing. I stand behind them, and I think that we in America need to pay attention because, again, our own Department of Homeland Security also labeled Americans terrorists if they question the COVID narrative mm -hmm. or undermine government institutions this week. That's very very the serious. FBI we do investigating this. parents as domestic terrorists if yes. they speak up at school board meetings. That's why Hannah Cox is based. Uh, Gary, Harold, and Hannah, a pleasure having all of you. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Kennedy. Thank you.